Okay, in this video, I thought that I would show how to use the optimization engine in ADS in order to optimize a power amplifier. So we're going to start with the harmonic balance power sweep test bench that we've been looking at. And I'm going to uh, modify the power amplifier to look at a slightly different power amplifier. Just so that I don't have to mess around with a design that's already finished. Uh, so here I've got a power amplifier where I've set the uh, output matching inductor uh, to be optimized across the range. Uh, we're going to uh, increase the size of this range from about 1 nanohenries to 10 nanohenries. And I've got a capacitor that's also set to be optimized. I'm going to let this go from, say, 2 picofarads up to 20 picofarads. Uh, we can also, uh, we could also, if we wanted to, set the input match to be optimized, but for the time being, I'm going to leave the input match alone, uh, knowing that it works fairly well uh, where it is right now. All right, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back up to the top level schematic. Uh, I'm going to run the simulation really quick. All right, the simulation's running. Okay, so I just ran the simulation. We're going to look at a couple of parameters. So first of all, we can see that we haven't quite driven this amplifier uh, into uh, up to a 1 dB compression point right now. You can see the gain compression is going up to a maximum of about, uh, sorry, the zooming is being a bit weird right now. You can see that the gain compression is going up to about a half a dB. So we want to increase the input power range in order to be able to drive this fully uh, to at least the uh, gain compressed, uh, the one to be gain compressed point. Uh, so we'll make uh, that change. And you can see everything else is fairly good. Uh, the efficiency uh, is quite low, but again, we're not anywhere near the uh, one to be compression point. So we expect the efficiency to be low uh, and we expect the optimizer to be able to help us to improve that. All right, so let's go back to our schematic. So in order to do an optimization, we need to set, uh, we need to go to the optimization palette. So we're going to go to uh, optums.doe, place an optimization engine into the schematic, and then we need to set some goals. Now I'm gonna get the goals from the equations uh, list. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and grab one of those goals right now. The first goal is going to be uh, alpha power. So let's go to the equations. And if we look at our equations, we do have this expression, P load W, which is the output power and watts. I'm going to copy this, uh, go back to the schematic. And in this equation, I'm going, I'm going to paste the equation right here, set the analysis to HB1. We're going to be sweeping the input power, so I'm going to sweep my input power variable, which in my case is called uh, PIN, uh, capital PIN. And I'm going to increase the range gear from 32 to 34 dBs based upon the simulation we just ran. And we're going to say that we want our uh, power to be uh, above, say, 42 dBm. Okay. Now, what you'll notice is the expression for power isn't quite right because this is the linear power. So I'm going to make a couple of changes here. Uh, first, I'm going to make this log 10 times log 10 of 1,000 times this value. We'll put the alpha power in dBm. I only want to look at the alpha power at the fundamental uh, or first harmonic. So I'm going to add brackets uh, to the v out and i out dot i expressions here. All right, so everything should be set for this expression. Now we're going to add one more goal. This one is going to be about the PAE. So to get the PAE, we're going to add that same alpha power expression. And I'm going to modify it in just a moment. I'm going to set these other details uh, similarly to what they were set for the output power goal. 
I'm going to say I want my PAE to be, say, higher than 35%. My input power range will be 32 to 34 BBM. And I'll hit OK. Now, I also am going to go in here and grab a, an expression for the DC power. I'm sorry, I need to grab that from the equations list here. The Oh, no, I did get that from the other uh, list. Uh, I mean, just uh, give me a moment. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, equation right here, the real part of the drain voltage times the drain, drain current. I'm going to go back to my goal and make a few modifications. I'll do that offline real quick. Okay, so here I've added my expression for PAE, 100 times the power of the fundamental frequency divided by the DC power consumed uh, in the drain. You can also see the expression for my output power in dBm. Now, one thing here, we did set these goals uh, to be from a minimum input power of 32 dBm to 34 dBm. So we need to make sure that our sweep range uh, does indeed cover that. So in my sweep plan, I've increased the stop frequency uh, from what was 25 dBm uh, to 35 dBm for the input power. And we should be all set to run. So let's go ahead and run the optimization and see what happens. All right, so it should pull the optimization engine up. You can see we have a kind of a tiny optimization range. It's only opti optimizing in this little little uh, red area right here, and it's trying to make the blue curve go above that red area uh, since we have uh, these set as the minimum values that are acceptable. Uh, you can see that the engine right now is changing component values for the matching, uh, the output matching capacitor and inductor. Uh, and we're seeing the results in real time as it tries to make the goals uh, be met. Uh, if we look at the uh, simulation run window, we can see that right now the current error factor is about 0 0.001. So it's doing a good job trying to get the uh, output power and uh, efficiency above uh, the limits that we've set. Now, uh, it's going through iterations. So at every iteration, it tries a new value uh, for the uh, passive components to try and improve the situation. You can see uh, that it generally uh, it's doing a, a good job of increasing the efficiency and not doing much to the output power right now. Uh, we might need to also optimize the input matching network. Okay, so the simulation just finished. Uh, let's go ahead and close the optimization engine and it's going to ask if we want to update the design. So we'll say update the design. And if we were to go into our schematic now, we could poke into that amplifier and we'd see that indeed the component values for the capacitor and inductor had changed. Um, this might not be the best matching network, so that might be what's limiting the uh, alpha power. So we might not be able to hit our optimum termination impedance with this network. Uh, that's always a possibility. Uh, if you're having trouble, you can always change the topology of the matching network up. Uh, you can try and, uh, and change the component types. Uh, you know, we could swap this from a high pass to a low pass, uh, you know, all kinds of things that we could try here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the top level simulation. Uh, we will run a simulation. Uh, and you can see now that indeed the set, the, the efficiency is uh, much better. So uh, it's about 50% uh, getting towards saturation. You can also see that we've driven the uh, amplifier a bit harder. So we're getting into that gain compression region. Uh, we do expect the efficiency to be a bit higher at the 1 dB compression point than, uh, than with lower compression. Uh, so that's as expected. You can see right now the alpha power is about 42.3 dB at the uh, at the peak, uh, at least that we've simulated to, and the efficiency is about 51.6%. Uh, 
All right, so uh, that's how to use the optimization engine uh, in order to uh, optimize a power amplifier. Of course, like I said, you can try different topologies. Uh, you can try uh, to optimize the input match at the same time you're optimizing the output match as well. Uh, those are all additional features that you can that you can add uh, to this. Uh, so I'll go ahead and stop there. And uh, until next time, uh, we'll talk to you again uh, in the next video.